Okay, so this is a magical moment. I finally, after about two days, got this Amazon uh, special USB to serial uh, cannibal adapter to send data into Savvy Can. Now, it worked out of the gate with Kangaroo, but I could not get it to work with Savvy Can. If you're doing any CAN bus reverse engineering, like I am here on this golf, golf cart, I have it plugged into the controller. I really need to use Savvy Can as software, but I could not get this thing to pair to it and work. So I will show you the steps. It, it, it took me a lot longer than expected, but once I show you these steps, it should be relatively straightforward and you can use this device with Savvy Can. Okay, follow these steps. Okay, so this is the device I bought off Amazon. I will give you a link to it. Uh, it's only $18. I thought, great, I'll use something like this to connect to Savvy Can, and I will do my automotive reverse engineering and everything will be easy. Uh, and it will be if you follow these steps. So first you get this, and when it comes, you have something like this, and it will plug into the USB port. First, use a PC. Uh, it doesn't work on M-series Macs and other things like that. So you'll plug it in, you'll hear a little sound. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is go to your device manager. And what you're gonna do in device manager on your PC is scroll down to the bottom. You might see something like universal serial bus devices. Open this and you, what you should see here is the Cannibal GS USB and Cannibal firmware upgrade interface, USB DFU. So you have this device. And so generally these devices can come in two different states. So if you go to cannibal.io updater and then version one, so you're gonna to go to cannibal.io updater, Cannibal version one, you're gonna to wanna to use Chrome. So you have to use Chrome. And then for me, the devices didn't get detected until I click this run this utility. So you gotta run it while Chrome is closed and then come back and you'll be able to see the devices. So there's generally two types of firmware you can put on these things, Candlelight or SL Can. So what we want is SL Can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the SL Can version. I'm gonna pull my uh, device out and there's a little switch here on the side called boot and we're gonna push this down so that it goes into boot mode. Okay, we're gonna put it back in the USB port. Okay, and you'll notice, you hear a little sound, this time the TX light doesn't come on. It's loading almost as uh, letting us boot to it. So I'm gonna choose SL Can. This is version one of Cannibal. Connect, oops, sorry. You'll see the window opens with my STM32 bootloader. I'm gonna say, yeah, that's the one. Hit connect. It's going to erase it. It's going to load the new firmware on it and make a sound. So that's promising. So we're gonna pull it out. We are going to switch boot mode back off. So flip that switch back up. Okay, so both switches are up. We are going to plug it back in. Okay, now we see the white light is on this time, which is good. We're going to go back into our device manager. And this time we should hopefully see a communications port. So ports and comm, I'm gonna open ports and comm. We see a USB serial device on comm eight. Okay, so that is good. So what that means is now this device is being recognized as a USB serial device on comm eight. So remember that, because if you switch your side or the port that it's in, it might change the comm a little bit, but this is all good progress. I haven't even plugged it into the cart yet, but now our um, Cannibal device is appearing as a comm port on comm eight. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is open our uh, Savvy Can. Okay, so the other thing I've learned about Savvy Can is there's a lot of different builds. Uh, this one is build V213. Uh, so just make sure you have a relatively new build out there and you've downloaded the one for your device. So Savvy Can is gonna open like this. We're gonna go into connection, open connection window. Yeah, we're going to add a new device connection. And what we're gonna choose is this one here, SL Can Serial, okay? We're gonna choose this. 
option. The COM port is the COM port that we are working on, right? And the other two are here. So I am going to put this at 1 million. And then my CAN bus that I'm working on is a golf cart. And it is at 500k, okay? And we are going to say create new connection. And if all goes well, you should see this right here already listed as connected. If you enable the console, you can kind of see and then click on the connection. Any conversation that might go on, let's just hit reset. You can see the conversation that's kind of happening, connecting and that everything is good. I'm gonna click back on this. So this is here. So I'm gonna go back to the garage now and plug it in. But if you're able to do that, these are all really good steps to get this bad boy to talk to your savvy can. Now all we need is a little bit of can data on the bus and it should show up automatically over here. It starts to show total frames captured. Those that numbers going up, you're in good shape. So let's go out to the garage. Okay, so back in the garage, I have the can port coming up here, pinning into my device. And all I have to do now is switch on the cart. So I'm gonna turn on the cart so that the controller starts. And boom, you'll be able to see, see a whole bunch of serial communication coming through here, which is great. And then in the background, I'm seeing total frames captured are coming in here as well. So that is a really good sign that things are working. Um, I now have data flowing in and that is all we needed to do. So believe it or not, that took me almost two days to figure out all those different steps hurdles along the way. I thought it was Cannibal version two. Really, this is Cannibal version one. Uh, anyways, all the different configurations and, and ways you can connect it to Savvy Can, but that is how you do it. So the only thing that might differ is the baud rate of the device that you're about, you're connecting to. So depending on what you're connecting to, for me, it was 500K, but for you, it might be slightly different. And we can see these flowing in here. Uh, so now what I can actually do is I can go into a tools, I could go into the sniffer, go into the sniffing tool. And you can see here, if you hit notch, that will quiet the changes that are happening automatically. This is an electric golf cart, so these are probably the voltage and amperage. So I'm gonna hit notch. That'll quiet them out. And then I can look for different changes. Like what I can do is I can put the cart in drive and we can see the attributes that are changing. I also am gonna leave it in neutral and I can push on the throttle pedal and we can see attributes that are changing based on the throttle pedal. So I now will work through these and figure out how to build my um, ID map so that I am able to keep track of the different attributes. And SavvyCan is just a much better piece of software to work on when doing this type of debugging. So I hope that helps somebody else who's out there working on their electronic project I am not a master at this type of thing, so I just saw this on Amazon and thought, hey, that's a great deal. If this could work with SavvyCan, that would be great. And I could not find any cohesive instructions. So those are the instructions on how you get this to talk to that. Anyways, hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know.